What's up everyone welcome back to another interesting video and today it's time to check out the Hyper OS 2.0 on our Poco X4 Pro but wait didn't Xiaomi stop pushing updates on this device? Well yeah, officially they did but shout out to the Poco X4 Pro community for porting HyperOS 2.0 and keeping this device alive. So in this video I'll be showing you what's new in this HyperOS, the features, customizations, performance and of course the bugs you need to watch out for. And by the way if you are new to the channel make sure to hit that like button and drop a sub right now for the latest updates and let's get started with this video. Firstly, when we head over to the settings, I didn't really notice any massive changes in the UI. It pretty much looks the same before, nothing too fancy or different. Now when we open the about phone section, it shows the current version as 2.0.100.0 and by the way, the shout out to Evans for porting this ROM for Poco X4 Pro. Now if you are wondering about the Android version, so yep, this one is based on the latest Android 15 with a security patch of 1st January 2025. And for the kernel, so it comes with the stock kernel by default. Now if we look at the home screen, it comes with the POCO launcher, so starting with the home settings, as usual you get a couple of transition effects. And when you tap on the more option, it opens another menu with a couple of extra features like you can tweak things like animation speed. And by the way, you get this new feature called the app finder or more likely an ad finder like when I enable it and move into my home screen and swipe down from the left side, you can search the apps from here but you also get free ads. <laughs> Anyways, you can change the screen layout and a few other home screen settings. And by the way, you also get an option to customize the system navigation like right now I have set it to gesture mode and yeah, you can also change the app preview style in the recent menu from here. Now when you scroll on the left side of your home screen, you get this app vault or honestly more likely an ad vault with more and more ads. And by the way, if you are curious about the widgets, there's a dedicated widget center where you can pick and customize a couple of them. Not a huge collection, but yes, it's there. Now moving into the quick settings panel, when you swipe down from the right side, you get this layout and to be honest, it gives me iOS vibes. Like they have moved the widgets and replaced it with one of their music players. And other than that, it's pretty much the same. Personally, I still prefer the old MIUI QS panel, it was cleaner and just felt easier to use but sadly it's gone a long ago. Now coming to the lock screen features, so yes the depth wallpaper is here like right now I've got this one set but there are a couple of other designs available too. For example, if I select this one, I can easily change the wallpaper even from my local directory and it will automatically detect the depth object in the image which is actually pretty cool. Not just that, you can also play around with the font effects like changing the font color for both the hour and minutes and you have got a few wallpaper effects to choose from as well. And if you want to disable the depth effect, there's a simple toggle, just tap on the depth option and it turns it off. So yes, even though it's iOS inspired, I gotta say that it's actually fun to mess around and yes, I found it pretty cool. Now if I talk about the settings specifically under the lock screen section, you can set up your fingerprint, face lock and screen lock from here and yes everything seems to work fine without any issues. Moving on to the always on display, well it's kind of misleading because it's not really always on. It only shows for like 10 seconds before the screen goes off and it's been a long time since Xiaomi hasn't fixed this. <laughs> But still you get a couple of always on display styles to choose from and you can even select a local image to display which is nice. Now coming to the display feature so there's this advanced texture option which adds a better visual experience to the system UI and yes it definitely works but you might face a lag while using it. Anyways you can also change the refresh rate from this menu and when you tap on the font option it takes you to the theme store where you will find a variety of font styles and you can apply whatever you like. Now in the sound and vibration section, we have got Dolby Atmos along with the Xiaomi sound and yes, both seems to work fine just like always and you get a couple of sound presets to choose from. Talking about personalization features, first off, you get a bunch of pre-included wallpapers when you scroll down and yes, there are also some super wallpapers available and by the way, I have tested them out and they work perfectly fine, no issues at all. Now moving on to the security features, you get private space which is something introduced in Android 15 
And other than that, when you move into the additional settings under screen recording, it only maxes up to 30 FPS. I really wish they had at least added 60 FPS support, but yes, maybe in the future update. And by the way, the floating window also works fine without any problem. And yes, the second space is still here for those who want the extra layer of privacy. Now talking about the pre-installed app, so you get the stock camera and yes, it works perfectly fine, no issues with it. And apart from that, you also get the stock Xiaomi gallery, which I personally liked and I'm glad that they stuck with the original Xiaomi apps instead of throwing any modded or third party stuff, keeping the thing stable. And now coming to the performance, so let's start with the Antutu score. So it scored around 435k, which is actually pretty solid for this device. And even for the CPU throttle test, so it's throttled to 81% of its max performance, which is pretty decent. And yes, for those asking about BGMI or PUBG Mobile, by default you get ultra settings unlocked, but I went ahead and flashed the FPS unlocker module so as to get the ultra extreme settings. So keep that in mind if you are planning to try the same. And by the way, you get this updated game turbo with some features like performance optimization, Mi Wi-Fi boost and for game specific features so you can boost the touch response along with the sensitivity. So yes, these are some features in the latest game turbo. And now for the actual gaming performance, so you can expect around 55 to 60 FPS consistently on both TDM and classic matches, which is pretty much smooth. And in terms of battery drain, so it dropped around 2% per TDM match, which I'd say is reasonable and totally manageable. So yep, that's it for the performance part, no major complaints right here. And now coming to the bugs, so in my usage I face just a few minor UI bugs, nothing too serious but yeah, the main bug is the USB file transfer or MTP issue with the PC. But I heard that the devs have found a fix, so hopefully that gets patched in the future updates. And by the way, if you are wondering about the play integrity status, so it only passes basic integrity, but don't worry, I have already made a video on fixing that, so make sure to check it out from the i button. So yeah, here comes the conclusion. If you still enjoy stock rooms, this is honestly a great choice. It's clean, has great battery backup and overall feels pretty stable for daily usage. And as for the flashing instructions, so everything is listed clearly in the description below. So make sure to check it out if you want to try it for your Poco X4 Pro. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more awesome contents and drop a comment telling me what you want to cover me in the next one. So that's it for today. So goodbye and take care.